Hello everybody and welcome back to Solving Standard. I'm Corbin Hostler and this, this is a fun brew. This is Indomitable Creativity. Shout out to Andrew Tolson who made day two of Grand Prix Seattle with this deck and in fact I believe was seven and two at one point with it. This is, this is a pretty nuts deck. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of treasure. We have Spell Swindle, as you can see. We have Horn Swoggle. That's a good one. Uh, we have Depths of Desire, even. We're going to make a bunch of treasure, and eventually we're going to cast Indomitable Creativity, which has a bunch of words on it, but essentially reads, you can destroy any number of creature or artifacts equal to how much mana you have, right? It's X uh, plus three red. Uh, and then... Uh, each one that is destroyed, that player reveals cards on top of their library until they hit an artifact or creature and they put it into place. So what our deck wants to do, as you might guess, is make a bunch of treasure with all these cards I mentioned and then Indomitable Creativity, all of our own stuff away to get our bombs. Neza Hulk, Locust God, Torrential Gear Hulk, Combustible Gear Hulk. That's a lot of value. Uh, and in the meantime, we're this blue-red control deck that gets to play. So uh, it's pretty sweet all around. And uh, we'll see how competitive it is, but certainly had a good run at the GP for Andrew. I'm not sure exactly how he finished, but making day two is no small feat. There were a lot of people playing, you know, quote unquote, real decks at the GP who did not make day two um, with those decks. Meanwhile, he played a brew, and this is a brew. By the way, it's a brew in desperate need of some magma sprays if you're building it yourself. The sideboard needs them. But uh, I took the list as is. It's a lot of fun. I think it's pretty good. Uh, at least, you know, it's at least a playable standard deck, right? It's not one of the, it's not a Scarab God deck, so it can't be the best deck. And it's not Mono Red. It's just not playing some of the, the power cards, right, of, of Hazaret and Scarab God or, or so on. But it does have Turn to Gear Hulk, and you know what? It is a lot of fun. And this is working out quite well for us, to be honest here. The Seether Hub gives us the double red if we need it. We will eventually need triple red. Uh, but our opponent missed their third land drop. I assume this is some sort of mono black aggro brew. Well, there you go. Indomitable creativity. Destroy X, target artifacts and or creatures. Each permanent will destroy this way. Its controller reveals cards from top of their library to the hidden artifact or creature. Exile it. Then put the extra card, exiled cards onto the battlefield and shuffle their libraries. Pretty fun card. And by the way, we just get a curve disallow into we'll see but disallow and hopefully spell swindle into gear hulk here and that's going to be a lot of treasure tokens for us let's see what our opponent's up to of course being able to disallow their play here is going to be uh pretty good i believe if they even hit land if they don't hit land it's even better because then we will for sure curve disallow into spell swindle ah and look at that no colored mana and or land for our opponent. And now we do have the triple red we're going to need. So looks like we might get to live the dream here. Of course, I guess Spell Swindle sort of scales with what your opponent actually gives you to play. But I have to have something to counter to, to get any treasure tokens off of Spell Swindle. But we have Disallow for their next play. Spell Swindle for the one after that. Gear Hulk the Spell Swindle. And now we're talking. That's a lot of treasure. Pretty sweet. I would like our opponent to actually hit their lands and play spells, though. I want to need to get some value out of the cards in my own hand. Eh, here we go. Glint Sleeve Siphon. You know what? This is definitely one to counter because I don't want them to get that second energy either. All right. Things are looking up. We have Spell Swindle. And if they do nothing, we even get to opt for a little bit of value here. Hopefully they just hit a land and play three drop that we spell swindle. That would be the dream. Unfortunately not, so we'll settle for this opt. I don't think I need this mountain. <laughs> Indomitable creativity number two. Yes, please. There's a sweltering suns. All right, so we get to pass the turn back to our opponent. We have Gear Hulk, but <laughs> chances are we'll be spell swindling first. Then, then we have the decision. We'll see what happens of, of Indomitable Creativity and three things away. If, if Assuming they have a three drop. Or we could just pass the turn, hold up Gear Hulk, get another counter, have more treasure so that we could get all five creatures out of our deck. We have a Locust God, uh, as you can see on the overlay there. A Locust God, uh, Neza Hall, a couple Torrentials. Um, I'm happy enough spell swindling this. 
Give me that treasure, please. And <laughs> happy here to just pass the turn back. No reason not to. We're under no pressure, obviously. Uh, we even have these sweltering suns to cycle away at the end of the turn if we need to. Yeah, here we go. Another two drop. Glowing Sleep Cypher number four. Nope, just a ballista. You know what? That's a good enough Gear Hulk target if I've ever seen one. All right, let's spell swindle the walking ballista. I believe this will get us two more treasures. Yep. All right, here we go. We're doing it, everybody. Red mana with this. Red, red. Uh, so four, four is a pretty convenient number. Oh, this is great. All right, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, four. There we go. All right, indomitable creativity for four. We are doing it. This is going to be fun. I sure hope our opponent lets this resolve and doesn't just scoop. Please. Please. Oh, yes. All right, there you go. Churchill Gear Hulk. <laughs> Combustible Gear Hulk? Are you kidding me? So, Combustible Gear Hulk, I know you need to read this card. Our opponent can either give us three cards, or we put three into our graveyard, and then they take damage equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Yeah, they're just going to scoop, though. Fair enough. We resolved it. I'm happy. <laughs> All right. On to the sideboard here. Uh, our opponent, I assume some sort of mono black aggressive deck, which means we probably want the Abrades, uh, the Cannonades here. Um, this is probably okay. Um, it could also be some sort of blue black deck. They only played Glint Sleep Siphoners. In which case, the Abrades are probably pretty bad, so it's actually, actually a good point. Uh, maybe we don't want to bring in the Cannonades, for instance. Um, is Insidious Will good? Is Meganized Production good? This was a fun one. Let's have some fun. Why not? Kind of Depths of Desire, I guess? What kind of sweltering sounds? We're going to kind of... I mean, that's what our opponent gets. They didn't really re reveal much information. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to hedge a little bit against, you know, whether are they aggro, mid-range, uh, control. I don't I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm out of touch with standard a little bit. I haven't played in a month or so. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll find out. And what are they going to do if we... Oh, okay. We guess that answers that question. Glad I didn't bring in those cannonades. They're not going to do much. Uh, as we saw, they have Glint Sleep Siphoners. Cause, so the removal is not dead regardless. If near Deadlands. I assume that means it's just blue-black. There's a Siphoner we're going to kill. We got plenty of red mana this time around. All right, so we're up to two energy. Our opponent has one. They don't have a creature. We'll see what they have here. This is a big turn uh, because if they do nothing, then we get to uh, have disallow up. They do have something, though. What is that something? Uh-oh. Uh, plan B. Plan B. It is plan B, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye, indomitable creativity. Non-artifact net. That'll do it. Turn three, lost legacy, indomitable creativities are gone. So, on the one hand, this is bad for us, right? We're out our sweet combo. On the other hand, our deck isn't that reliant on it, right? All the cards we have to win with are also just cards you can win with by casting them. And lost legacy is a card that our opponent has now burned out of their hand, and we don't have any indomitable creativity in our hand. So at the end of the day, in terms of pure card advantage... Um, this is good for us. Our opponent has burnt a card that does not impact our hand. Therefore, they are just down a card. And, you know, in the sense that, you know, theoretically one of the most powerful draws in our deck is no longer there. I mean, literally our, our plan A is no longer there. Um, we're now up a card in what essentially is probably going to amount to a control battle because we still get to play as a blue-red control deck. I mean, we still have counter spells. We still have win conditions. We still have opt to dig to those things. We still have removal uh, for their creatures. So... 
Um, you know, in some ways it seems bad, but it, it's honestly, it's, it's not as bad as it looks. And now we get to pass the turn back with Disallow, with Opt, with Spell Swindle later, and our opponent has to find a way to do something. That was their window to land a creature to do something, and they weren't able to do that. And now they're just going to run whatever this is into our Disallow. Or they're going to think that one through. Ballista for one, huh? I mean, here's the thing. They're kind of acting like they have their own counter spell to back this up. Things I'm actually fine if they do. Okay, well that just works. Okay, get Bustable Gear Hulk. It is a win condition. And again, I don't know the configuration of our opponent's deck, so I don't know if I even have to worry about kind of magic out of them. I don't know if tapping out for Combustible Gear Hulk on turn six is a terrible idea or not. I guess we'll find out. This is a 6-6 six, six first striker. I assume they won't let us draw three, which means they take damage. The fact that they did nothing there is probably very good for us. Uh, we'll bottom the island. We'll draw Harness Lightning. Now we get to pass the turn back. We have Spell Swindle up. Uh, we have another op to continue to sculpt our hand later. And then um, if we want, we can go for Compossible Gear Hulk. Basically, our opponent giving us anything to counter here is insane for us. And there it is. Okay, beautiful. Honestly, about as well as we could draw it up right there. We had a Spell Swindle Doomfall, get all the treasure tokens. Now we get a move to our turn. Our sweltering sense doesn't matter that much, but we get to slam combustible gear hulk when they can't do anything about it. Alright, I've never cast this card in my life, but let's see what happens. Something tells me they're not gonna let us draw three cards, so we'll see how many we get to dome them for. Oh, we hit the Neza Hall. <laughs> so we hit our opponent there for eleven damage. Sweet. Um, that's great. You know, not so great is that Neza Hall is our most uh, resilient win condition for obvious reasons. It has a million abilities, but you can exile it, uh, or, yeah, exile it by discarding cards and so on to protect it. Now, our opponent might actually just be able to grind through our creatures. We have zero more combustible gear hulks, we have two torrential gear hulks, and a, and a locust god. Now, locust god's very good, but our cards have to resolve. Liliana, huh? That said, Liliana is not very good. Yeah, make a zombie that we get a kill. Not good for our opponent. Glimmer Genie is quite good for us. I'm just going to go ahead, I think, and harness lightning the zombie, kill Liliana, and go from there. Yes, our opponent's just on blue black mid range over there. There's a Neza Hall in our graveyard for them to get back with Scarab God. That would be pretty bad. I could put our opponent to one. You know what? That is tempting. Killing Liliana is good. However, if we put our opponent to one, I'm not... That's so risky, though, because like I said, we have very few wing conditions. It's not like we're going to draw a you know, lightning strike and finish them off. And if they're able to... You know, we have Optin Glimmer, but if we don't draw into a way to protect our, our combustible gear hulk and they get to untap with Liliana... Um, that's quite bad for us. So, you know, on the one hand, we have the Swell Dream to remove the next zombie or whatever. Um, also, there was a Gonti in their graveyard that they found off of that Liliana. Uh, plus, did you, people always forget, not only does it make a zombie, it puts the top two cards of your library in your graveyard, one of which was a Gonti. So, also really don't want to give them the opportunity to, uh, to bring that back. All right, so here we go. Here is the Vraska's Contempt on our Gear Hulk to put him back up to eight life. Um, let's see what we can find here. We're looking for a couple cards. We could actually bounce this with Depths of Desire. That'd be pretty sweet. So in that case, I think it is most, we're most likely to find a way to deal with this by glimmering right away. And just aggressively shipping cards that don't win. Okay, well that was pretty good. Oh, that'll do it. 
quite conveniently, our opponent uh, is at six life, and we found a negate, merfolk negate, by the way. There you go. Negate that. Our opponent's at six life. Let's get on in there with combustible gear. Hulk and win the game. Wow. No indomitable creativity is needed. We won with the all-in indomitable creativity. Get all the creatures, and we won without it. Oh, this deck was sweet. That was an awesome match. Solving standard, everyone. Looking forward to Dominaria. Going to be back with a lot of videos then. In the meantime, I'll be at GP Hartford this weekend. And i uh, love for anybody to come up and say hi. I love chatting with people, pitching me deck ideas, all of that great stuff at events. So, everyone, this is Solving Standard. I'm Corbin Hostler. Thank you for watching.